Temptation is not a sin, but temptation can lead to sin. And that is scriptural. In today's video, I want to speak about overcoming temptation as a Christian. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If it is your first time watching, my name is Wen. And welcome back if you are returning to view today's video. If you are yet to subscribe to my channel, do so now. And if you enjoy the content of this video, do not forget to leave a thumbs up and leave a comment also. Number one, in order to overcome temptation, you need to be aware of this very important point that temptation is not a sin. Most times we make the mistake, maybe because of how we grew up and what we heard about temptation and maybe the religious teachings we've received, we get to a point of feeling like temptation is a sin. And that was where I was. I thought that being tempted is a sin, so I should not even feel tempted. I should not even have the feeling of being tempted because I felt like it was a sin. And this is what goes on when you already feel like temptation is a sin, the purpose of overcoming that temptation or not falling into it is already defeated. Because you feel like I've already committed the sin, why not go all in and later ask God for forgiveness? Because I've already fallen into it. But no, temptation is not a sin. If you see someone attractive and you feel attracted to the person, the attraction is not a sin, but what you do with the attraction is what will either lead to sin or not lead to sin. Now, this is the point I would share with you that temptation is not a sin, but temptation can lead to sin. And that is scriptural in the book of James. When I felt like temptation was a sin, I was always conflicted by Matthew chapter 4. And I do ask myself, why did the Spirit of God lead Jesus, the Son of God, the Savior, into the wilderness to be tempted to be tempted of the devil and it's clearly stated in the scriptures and it was always confusing that i did not even get an answer until i got this truth that temptation is not a sin then i realized what scripture says about jesus that he was tempted in all forms but yet he did not sin so this is to tell you you could be tempted you could feel the temptation, but then you overcome that temptation and do not sin. And that was the story of Jesus. The devil tried to play with him because of his desires. He tried to tell him, I know you're hungry. Turn these stones to bread. You have the power. And most times that is where we find ourselves because we desire something and then the devil presents it to us. And he will be like, you have the power. It's in your jurisdiction. You can do this and get away with it and nothing will happen and that is why most times we get to fall into temptation when when we think that feeling the temptation or having the thought is us sinning already now that is where guilt and condemnation comes because the cycle will come to a place of i'm now feeling guilty because i have the thought i'm now feeling guilty because i feel the temptation in my body so because I have all these thoughts and I'm feeling the temptation in my body, I've already seen. So why not go deeper and round it up and finish it up? So that is why most Christians do not overcome temptation. When they believe innately that temptation is a sin. And this is me telling you, for you to overcome temptation, you need to be aware, first of all, that temptation is not a sin. That is why Jesus was tempted and he did not sin. So you could be tempted and you could overcome and you can overcome that temptation and not fall into sin. So let me give you the scripture. Whenever you feel tempted and it feels like you've already sinned, scripture says that there is now therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. If you are saved by grace, if you are saved by Christ and you believe in his finished work and all he has done at the cross, just know that whenever you feel tempted, it doesn't mean you have sinned, but it is presenting you an opportunity to decide. Because now if you decide to yield to your temptation, then you fall into it. But if you decide to yield to God, then you will overcome that temptation. It is just for you to know, I am not condemned. Because the first thing the devil will do to you 
is make you feel so condemned. How could you have this thought? How could you think that way? How could you even have that in your mind? Oh, by now, you should have not been having such thoughts in your mind. Such thoughts should not have come to you. And before you know, the guilt starts circulating, the, the condemnation starts filling your heart and you start feeling bad. That is when to remind yourself, no, I am not condemned. And the scriptures clearly state in Romans chapter 8 that the fleshly desires war against the spirit. That it, it is against God. So it's for you to know whenever my body desires something, I do not have to give it to my body. So me feeling the temptation just shows that I am human. Me feeling attracted to someone that I see who is beautiful just means I am human. Me having the desire for something that innately I know I should not do that thing, that desire doesn't mean I have already committed the sin. But it means I can now hold myself accountable and say, no, stop thinking this way and redirect my mind. This is different from the loss that Jesus talked about in Matthew chapter 5, that if you look at a woman lustfully, you've already committed sin. It's different. The lost thing and look at a woman lustfully is an intentional act, whereby you look at the woman, you start visualizing how naked they could be. I know this is raw, but I'm just being real. Point number two. For you to overcome temptation, you need to understand that temptation comes from your desires. Temptation does not come from the sky. It doesn't fall off from the sky. It doesn't fall off from anywhere, but it comes from what is in your heart. That is why Christ said, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Which means everything that is in your heart will come out. Everything that is in you will come out. Either it come out of your body through actions, or it come out of your mouth through words, through the things you say. So you have to be careful to make sure that you realign your desires. That is why the scripture is so beautiful in Psalms that says, Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Which clearly means when you delight in the Lord, when you are soft to God, when you submit and surrender to God, you will change and transform and realign your desires and give you good desires. Because naturally, as a man, as a human being, Christian or not, you will have desires that are against God. It's just natural. If there is a need in you, in your soul, that you've not filled, that you've not received God by surrendering to God, whether it's a need for love, need for attention, or for whatever thing, that need and that desire will lead you to be tempted. And if you are not careful, you fall into that temptation. Now, James chapter 1 says, Temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us and drag us away. These desires give birth to sinful actions. And when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. And this is where you have to know that you do not have to allow the desires and the temptation that you feel to lead you to commit that sin or to act on those desires. This scripture came to me, Daniel chapter 1 verse 8, that says that Daniel purposed in his heart that he will not eat the king's meat or drink the wine. Now you have to be very careful to know that those meal was so delicious. So for Daniel to have purpose in his heart, he is making a conscious determination that I'm not going to eat this. I'm going to be tempted to eat it. It's going to be so delicious, the aroma is going to be so satisfying, but I'm not giving in to this. So it means you should be in a posture of telling yourself, I'm not giving in to how I feel. I'm not giving in to my desires. I'm not giving in to the feelings, the movements in my body, whatever desires it is. And this is where you have to know also that everybody is tempted differently. Because we are all unique and we have unique desires. That is why I can never be tempted to smoke. It irritates me, but you know what? I could be tempted to watch porn. I could be tempted to try something sexually. I could be tempted in a lot of different ways, but to smoke, I would never be tempted to smoke. To drink alcohol, I would never be tempted to drink alcohol because it is not in me. I don't even have the desire to take it. For people, it's different. There are people that could be, that their temptation is they cannot see the wine. 
like Proverbs describes it, when it's red and foaming, they can't just see it because it is already dragging them. It is already enticing them. They are being provoked to take that wine. And temptation clearly means being enticed, which means you are being provoked to do something through false or exaggerated promises or persuasion. That is why temptation can never be, I was forced to do it. That wasn't temptation. If you were forced to do something, victimized or whatever way, it's different from temptation. For some people, it could just be the reason they are tempted to steal, steal money. It's not about being an arm robber. Whether in the office, you are in charge of money and you're being tempted to steal is because that greed is in them. It's just the love of money, avarice. Now, that is what happened to Judas. His heart had been taken over by greed. That was why, even when the alabaster box, when that ointment was poured on Jesus' feet, Judas complained. And it was like, this oil could have been used, the money would have been used to feed the poor with this amount of money wasted. And Jesus said, no, she's not wasted. So, the truth is that his heart was already taken over by greed. So it was so easy for him to steal and get to the extent of betraying his savior for money. And a lot of people are like that. They are already greedy, so they are selfish and everything is me, 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 me. It's all about them. It's also a temptation because the desire is there. So every time they see money, they are being tempted to take everything, making sure that others don't have nothing. So what are you to do to overcome the temptation? It is to realign your desires by delighting yourself in the Lord. The word delight there means, means susceptible to God, to being bent, to being turned, to being changed. So once you delight yourself in the Lord, which means you surrender to the Lord, He will give you good desires in your heart. Number three, to overcome temptation, you need to renew your mind daily. Now, in Romans chapter 12, Paul wasn't talking to unbelievers, but he was talking to believers and he told them, Brethren, give your body. He did not say give your spirit to God. He said give your body to God as a living sacrifice, which means as I am living, I am living sacrificially to forsake every other thing to the honor of God, to the reverence of God. Because he said this is your worship. This is your acceptable worship. This is your acceptable sacrifice. When you give your body, like the song, the hymn says, Take my mouth and let it be. Take my eyes and let it be. Take my mouth and let it be. Take my voice and let it be. Consecrated, Lord, to thee. So you need to come to a place of saying, Lord, all of my body, all of my desires, all of my thoughts, Lord, take it all. Lord, take it all and consecrate it all to you. Paul went ahead to say, Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is to clearly depict that you need constant renewal of your mind. And that is what I call continuous and consistent repentance. Because repentance is not a one-off thing. It's not a one-time thing. Before I thought repenting was just since I've given my life to Christ and I've repented, that is enough. But I've come to realize that if you want to stay as an overcomer, to overcome all temptations that come to you, you need to keep on repenting because every day you're going to see things that your desires go out to and then you keep on changing your mind. You keep on renewing your mind through the word of God, which is why you need the daily bread. Because you cannot renew your mind daily if you're not receiving the daily bread. In the Lord's prayer, that part said, give us our needful bread. Give us our daily bread. It means... Man shall not live by bread alone, don't forget, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. As I wake up in the morning, I go to my daddy God and ask him for the bread I need. Because that food, that manna that I receive from him, that living bread that I receive from him for the day is what will help me through the temptations of the day. Because every day will come with its own temptations too. And I don't really know how you're being tempted in your life. But whichever way the temptation is coming from, you need to be reminded to get to the word of God. And let God renew your mind. As you're reading the word, see Jesus. Let your mind be renewed daily as you read, as you study, as you listen to the word preached, the anointed word preached. 
Don't feel condemned. Don't allow your desires to decide for you. But listen to the word and then allow God to brood in your heart through his spirit to will and to do of his good pleasures. Number four, yield to God and not to your flesh. Now, when you were in sin before you gave your life to Christ, the reason you were continuously in sin is because you always yielded to your flesh. You always yielded to your desires. You always yielded to your sinfulness. But now, scripture says that sin shall not have dominion over you in Romans chapter 6 verse 14 because you are not under the law, but you are under grace. Because you know you've been saved and you're not even living this Christian life by your strength, by your effort, but by the grace of God that has been provided for you. So you are living because you've been aided. Keep on being aided by God daily by yielding to him. Lord, I submit to you. And then let me add this. Have a physical accountability partner. Because a life of yieldedness to God, if that is an English, a life that is yielded to God is a submissive life. Which means you look for someone whom you respect and can trust, whether that could be a friend, and then make sure you are accountable. Make sure you are held accountable. And how can someone hold you accountable unless you are submissive? Which means you need to be transparent with them, to be open with them, to be free, to be vulnerable with them. Letting them know, look, I'm being tempted right now. Hold me up in prayer. Advise me. That's why scripture talks about Jesus, that we do not have an high priest who is not touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but he was in always tempted, yet he did not sin. And because of this, he is able to succor us, to help us through our temptations. That is why in the Lord's prayer, he told us to pray, lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from the evil one. What does that even mean? Lead me not into temptation does not mean that I will not be tempted. It doesn't mean God don't allow me to ever be tempted. No. It means when I am tempted, don't let me fall into the temptation. When I am tempted, don't let the evil one have me. And this is a life of saying, God, I'm yielded to you. I surrender to you. Fill me up. Fill every place of need in me so that I will not be empty. Because when I'm, when I am empty, there is an opportunity for temptation to drag me through my desires and I am enticed with the false promises of being filled, with the false promises of being made whole and being persuaded to do things I'm not supposed to do. So I hope this video is helpful and is beneficial to you if you're struggling with any kind of temptation. I want you to leave a comment and let me know how this video has helped you. And if you have questions to ask about a specific thing, you can reach out to me and let me know also. Thank you so much for watching today's video. It is such a pleasure to have you. See you in my next YouTube video. Thank you and bye.